Well, nothing seems to be more controversial than talking about if red meat is good for you or bad for you, especially in the days where the vegan and plant-based movement is uh, quite big. And recently I posted this article that suggested that red meat is actually not bad for us. So today we're going to dive into that paper, look at the details a little bit more, as well as look at a few other papers that have come out recently to support my position that red meat probably isn't bad for us, and in fact it's actually really good for us. So let's dive in. All right, so this is the paper that was referenced in that article, which was posted in Nature Medicine. So not a small journal, it's actually quite a reputable journal, and the title is Health Effects Associated with Consumption of Unprocessed Red Meat, a Burden of Proof Study. And the Burden of Proof Study is interesting because they're leveraging new ways of looking at research to account for uh, confounding variables and different things in this paper. So that's an important thing to look at. And we're not going to go into all the details of all the results that they found throughout here. If you want, you can find the paper. It is available for free online. You can go into each of the individual results and look up the further references and see their results on them. But I think the summary gives us enough information for what we want to cover for now. Otherwise, this video would be very long. So the introduction to the study gives us a good outline of what they're looking at, how they're picking apart some of the poor data, but then also shows us um, their point and their results where they found weak evidence in association with quite a few conditions and no association with ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. And in the beginning here, they're really pointing out how a lot of the data is quite uh, heterogeneous and it's very mixed. Some studies obviously like the Eat Lancet and some of the studies being uh, shown by World Health Organization are showing that eating meat may be associated with disease. But yet when we look at the studies in more detail, there's a few issues. There's a lot of ambiguity. Some show no significant relationship between red meat. Some show there is. Um, but furthermore, when they actually analyze the strength of evidence, it tends to be quite poor. So this is things like uh, the fact that it's mostly observational data. They don't associate or they're not accounting for confounding variables like the healthy user bias. And there's a whole host of issues. They even point out at the beginning here that a lot of the methods that they're using for statistical analysis when they're looking at a lot of the intakes of meats um, using a log linear relationship may actually not be a very good way of analyzing this type of data. They may overemphasize the potential results, negative results associated with eating meat. So they break that down here and that's why this study again is really good because they're using uh, quite good methods in the way that they're analyzing this data. When we look at the methods, again, this is a systematic review, so they're looking at a whole host of papers, so trying to get as much data as possible. Again, higher quality of evidence here. Um, they found 55 reports met their inclusion criteria, which had information on 37 prospective cohorts. Um, and in total, uh, they looked at a, each study ranged from 639 to over 500,000 in length of follow-up and ranged from 4.1 to 32 years, so quite a lot of people in quite a long time, so good quality evidence again. And then what they did is they converted their um, risk for each of those into the risk outcome score. So that's the score of 0 to 5, which we'll look at a little bit later in the paper to show the quality of evidence. And so as we said, we can look at the table here where they've done the star rating for each of those. So we can see low quality evidence. So on that rating of 0 to 5, 2 is quite low. So for colorectal cancer, breast cancer, ischemic heart disease, type 2 diabetes, there's a rating of 2 stars, suggesting low quality evidence. So again, that's things like they haven't accounted for confounding variables, and etc. And the methods are perhaps not good in that they're observational only. So correlation doesn't mean causation. We don't have firm data to suggest that eating red meat was the cause of these things. Things. So we need better information. And then ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke, we can see one star. So even worse data in support of these. So again, this suggests that uh, it's more complicated than it seems and probably it's not the meat that's causing the disease. It's probably something else that we haven't accounted for. And we can see that when we look at better and higher quality data. So here in the discussion, this is sort of a key thing to point out, right? And this is the whole thing about poor evidence. And when we look at it a little bit more stringently, this is what we sort of find. So here they say the key finding of our analysis is that there is substantial between study heterogeneity and uncertainty for all six, all six risk outcome pairs included. This may partly reflect the high degree of heterogeneity often present in the data sources used for dietary analysis, which typically comprise observational studies. So again, that's the main thing. We cannot take away from observational studies that this is causative. It's correlation only. 
Of course, that doesn't take away from the fact that it may be associated, but there's a growing amount of evidence now that's suggesting that meat is not actually associated with a lot of these conditions. That may change as we get more and more data, but it looks like with the more amount of papers coming out that have higher quality and better controls for confounding variables, there doesn't seem to be any strong any strong causation between red meat intake, especially unprocessed red meat intake, and a host of diseases. Now conversely, here's a study that I wanted to pull out that came out recently as well, showing that meat intake is actually associated with improved life expectancy. So this kind of goes against the whole narrative that meat is bad for us. This study is excellent, and again, it's in the International Journal of General Medicine, a very reputable journal, and it's got some pretty eye-opening results that are very clear that uh, meat consumption and animal-based nutrition is extremely important for improved life ex expectancy and reducing the risk of mortality from uh, childhood all the way to adulthood. So let's look at this one in more detail. Now, the introduction to this study is actually fantastic. It talks about a lot of the things that I talk about frequently, um, especially in relation to considering the relationship between our early hominins and hominids, and that meat is very clearly a part of our diet and potentially a part of our specific evolution where we had a reduction in the gastrointestinal size that allowed for a greater growth of our brain and muscles and everything else. So that's in line with the expensive tissue hypothesis, something I talk about a lot. So if you have the ability to, I highly recommend going through and actually reading this introduction because it outlines a lot of those key sort of first principle concepts, which if we align our thinking with those, makes it pretty hard to argue that consuming something we've consumed for millions, probably millions of years is bad for us. It just doesn't make sense. And they outline that extremely well in this introduction. So I highly recommend reading through it. And one of the key things that they outline in that argument that I liked quite a lot, which is again very parsimonious, makes perfect sense, is the fact that they say here, before agriculture was introduced, circa 11,000 to 9,000 years ago, human ancestors could not grow, harvest, and store a majority of plant-based products as the staple food. Plant foods are mostly accessible only in particular seasons of the year. Contrarywise, animals including large game, small animals, fish, and some insects could constantly provide humans with meat as the staple food. So again, in the modern day, yes, we have the availability of uh, agriculture and monocrops, but before, for the majority of our history as a species, we did not have access to this. And we didn't see the types of diseases we see now where we're associating it with meat. If it was, we would have seen that in the evidence in our early ancestors, not only in the last 50 to 100 years where we see this sudden spike in chronic disease. Now again, I'm not going to go through all of the data in this paper, it would take too long, but this single chart probably tells us all we need to know from here. Right? So we can see on the left we've got childhood mortality under five years, on the right we've got life expectancy in years, and on the bottom going left to right we see the amount of meat consumption. So the first thing we can see very clearly is this uh, dashed line here, which is mortality for under five years. So we see very, very clearly an inverse relationship. The more meat that you consume, the less child mortality that we see. This is particularly important in developing nations and third world nations where access to nutrition and nutrients is quite poor. And if we take away animal-based nutrition, we're really taking away their ability to thrive and even survive. And it's something that in the West, it's a bit of um, uh, white privilege or Western privilege that we can have these manufactured foods from facilities that are plant-based. Many people in the world, the vast majority of people in the world, do not have access to these types of foods. They need animal-based nutrition. But even if we don't account for that, if we look at just life expectancy overall, even for adults, for everything, we see this line here, which is moving up and to the right. So we see a positive association with the increase in meat consumption associated with improved life expectancy. Right, so we're getting more longevity for people that consume more meat. So this would go, and this study was really good because they looked at an extremely large database of data points from all around the world, not just in the West. Right, so we see in Africa, again, positive association in the Americas, East, Mid uh, East Mediterranean, and Europe, etc. We see all across positive association. I highly recommend reading this paper because they outline a lot of the key concepts that a lot of us in this space promoting animal-based nutrition talk about frequently. For instance, they show that you know meat, and there's a lot of data to support this, is a complete source of nutrition. So it's got full essential amino acids, it's got pretty much all the minerals, all the vitamins that we need to survive. Whereas you can't say that is true about a plant-based diet. We know it's deficient in key nutrients, B12, iron, vitamin A, vitamin K2, uh, essential amino acids, etc. So again, very good. I highly recommend reading through the paper. 
So in conclusion, again, just to support the position, studies show that meat intake is positively associated with life expectancy at, at a national level. So again, across many different countries, not just the West. And they outline again from an evolutionary point of view, it has arguably been an indispensable component in the human diet for millions of years, which is evidenced genetically by meat digesting enzymes and digestive tract anatomy, as I suggested at the beginning with the change of the gastrointestinal tract. So great evidence again, yet another paper showing that meat is probably good for us um, when we associate confounding variables and when we look at uh, populations all around the world. So let's look at a, another paper that came out recently again, just to support our position that meat probably is good for us. So this is one that has come out just recently as well. I don't have the full paper here. Hopefully it will be out and available soon. I am looking to source it, but just as a quick reference point, there's more and more papers like this coming out. Um, this one was in the Journal of Affective Disorders. So when we look at psychological health and mental well-being, there's a very clear association, again, correlation at the moment, but um, mechanistically and theoretically, there are clear uh, mechanisms as to why a plant-based diet deficient in animal-based nutrients is not good for mental health. But what this one showed here, if we look at the conclusion, is that depressive episodes are more prevalent in individuals who do not eat meat independently of socioeconomic and lifestyle factors. So again, why this study was good, if we look at the methods, they're actually um, accounting for confounding variables, right? We can see here, so sociodemographic parameters, smoking, alcohol, physical activity, uh, other clinical variables, self-assessed health status, BMI, etc. So this paper is much better quality than a lot of them that have shown that meat is bad for us, where they haven't accounted for the confounding variables. So another example of better research coming out in the last couple months and over the last couple years showing that there is a negative side to being plant-based and not consuming animal-based nutri nutrients. Hopefully I'm able to show you that meat probably isn't bad for us and in fact it is actually good for us. So I do promote a more well-rounded, balanced diet. I'm not necessarily a carnivore. I'm not promoting carnivore diets here per se. If that works for you, great. But what I am suggesting is that a diet that is devoid of animal-based nutrients is likely not good for us as we're missing out on key nutrients. And in my experience, most people are not getting enough animal-based nutrition anymore. Protein is the most important thing that we need in the diet, especially if we're talking about weight loss. But now we even have evidence against uh, longevity and mental health disorders. So please think about consuming animal-based nutrition in your diet. Let me know what you think. If you don't agree with me, great. Let's start a discussion down in the comments. Um, if you have other evidence to share, please post it and we can have a little bit of a discussion going and I'm happy to do another video to look at some of that research. All right, guys, that's all I got for you now. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with other people. And if you want to support the channel, you can actually donate down in the link below as well. We'll see you guys next time.